Welcome to the Catholic Dadcast by Rich Puntang, where we break down all things dad from a Catholic perspective. Now more than ever, we need dads to step up their game. Gentlemen, buckle up and get ready for battle. Welcome to the Catholic Dad Podcast. I am Rich Pintang, your host and founder, broadcasting from beautiful, sunny Orange County, California. And we are continuing our Marian series. And we are going to be talking about the Immaculata Ministries and the great things that are happening with uh, serving the those most in need and allowing our Catholicism to grow throughout the globe. And my guest today is a theology teacher at Servite High School, proud alumni, father of two, and co-founder of Immaculata Ministries. Welcome to the show, Brother Connor Martin. Thank you so much, Rich, for having me. Um, I can't thank you enough for the opportunity. I'm just so blessed that uh, finally our schedules have been able to link up. And as we're winding down the year, this is just a, a perfect opportunity during the month of May to finally mm-hmm. talk and get together about Our Lady. Uh, yeah, for sure. And, and uh, I, the way I see it is uh, God has us busy for a reason. Amen. You, you, you know, you and I got a lot of work to do. You know, yeah. we, I think we, we, we see a lot of things that go on in society that, you know, we struggle, we, we see struggles with, but, uh, the great thing is that, um, we allow, you know, God to take the wheel and, uh, let, let, uh, let us be his instruments. But man, it, it's, it's so cool to, to finally get together, man. Uh, how is it uh, for you guys, um, at Servite with, uh, with being back and feeling like there's there, that you're yeah. able to get, uh, your instructions in, yeah, uh, well, Servite, it's just a blessed community to begin with. The brotherhood is just something you can't replicate. Um, maybe in another all-boys school, but there's something very very special about Servite. Maybe the fact that we're servants of Mary. That's what, what it has something to do. It has something to do with the magic that's going on here, the graces that are flowing from these these halls. Uh, but with COVID and everything, that, that uh, all the hurdles, uh, Servite's been just – a, still a blessing you know with all like the social distancing and the mass wearing uh you do your best and you forget the rest but uh, you can only put up so many walls between these guys getting together and it, it honestly is you you just let them do their own thing and so um it's been a blessing to see how even with this pandemic the brotherhood is stronger than ever you know what, what doesn't kill us only makes us stronger and uh it's it's been such a, a learning experience and the growth here is just absolutely, you know, the, the fruits undeniable about what's going on here at Servite Catholic high school. So it's just a blessing being uh, on campus and back in the classroom. Yeah. Yeah. And especially knowing that like uh, everyone has dealt with, with that, you know, in so many different ways between, you know, you guys as a staff, uh, as educators, um, our, the, the kids and our youth, but uh, you know us as parents and, and um, you know head of household, there's there's a lot of um, soul searching and, and uh, uncertainty that we're faced with. But you know it, it's so like invigorating to be feel like we're, we're we're back. Obviously, you know, based on who you're listening to, we're, we're not out of you know out of the woods. But I just like to think that like oh the, the things we took for granted, like like yeah. being able to you know um, partake in the Eucharist. Yeah, those, those were things that in our communities, we just really missed and yearned, and and now, you know, I think it's the the fruits are starting to come out. Like people are hungry for the world. Yeah. is that what you're yeah. seeing too? Yeah, one of the things that we did here is uh, just knowing that, like, okay, if all the securities that the world had were like stripped away, you know, and that, that was very evident, um, whether it be financial or work related or whatever's going on. And so when we came back to school, we only started off with two weeks in, in virtual. We continue to do virtual, but most of the guys have been on campus year uh, all year long with different cohorts, like half the school coming on Monday, the other half coming on Wednesday, We this rotating thing. But now we're all back on campus. But what we did as a staff, especially the theology program, 
we're like, we got to go all in with Jesus Christ present on the altar in the Eucharist. So what we've been doing is we've had 24 uh, seven in, in the sand. So from bell to bell, we have perpetual adoration going on all day here at school. Yes. And we, we have uh, faculty who give their free periods. So we have uh, uh, two free periods um, throughout the schedule of your week. So I have off, uh, what do I have off? Fourth, uh, third, I don't even know what, what periods I have off. I get fourth and six off. And so I offer one of those up to go be a perpetual adorer with Jesus during my sixth period. And so the entire theology program is doing that so that we can be with Jesus and have access to the sacrament um, around the clock. So our kids are encouraged to go. We call it taking the walk. So at any point in the time of the day where something's going on, they're encouraged to go down to the chapel and spend time with Jesus. We have one father from India, Father Joseph, who has been hearing confessions around the clock. So now we have two lunches a day, so we have more social distancing. Father's in the chapel hearing confessions twice a day, every day. Hmm. And now we incorporated benediction on Fridays, of course, daily mass. Now twice a day. Like So hmm. it's just like we put more weight on the bar. So when things got tough, the tough gets going. And uh, so Father, the theology department, and Servites really step up to the plate to meet the spiritual needs of the community. And so that, and to me, is is the most miraculous thing I've ever seen in my life. And uh, even more so with with the fact that you, know, you guys as educators, Connor, there's so much there's so much emphasis on spiritually putting the foundation in the youth because they are our I mean they are our future. I mean I, we we joke about it quite a bit, but the fact is they are our future leaders. And like if if we don't instill in them why you always go back to what God t- teaches us they're going to kind of sway and we, we, we don't want that because we see what happens with a, a godless society. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, man, I, I just can't wait for, for you to be able to see, um, the fruits of your labor, how many people, you know, you know, from graduating classes to alumni that come back. I mean, your story, even, even your story about, um, you know, about Immaculata Ministries, um, and, and how that came about. And we're going to we're going to touch on that. Trust me, um, there, there's there's so much that's involved in that. But um, and all the great things and amazing things, you know, when you trust in God yep. and you, you're able to, you know, see the need and say, this is where I'm called to be. You know, um, I'm I think if we took a step back and we look at, you know, the foundation of your faith growing up, you know, it's it's kind of like roles are reversed, right? You, you were you were a friar. You were in their shoes, and now you're in front of the class. You're not even you know you're not even in the seat. So, I I would think that that's a lot of where your passion comes from with with your Catholicism. But if you take a step back to like um, when you were growing up, you know where have you seen your Catholicism grow uh, grow in you, and um and and the fruits of you know dad even mm-hmm. uh, even staying on you yeah um man the father the father I like, the father in the home is just so important and this is coming from a young man myself speaking because i'm 35 <laughs> i don't know if i'm still young or not but i come from a divorced home uh you know and it was um dysfunction junction from the beginning uh, my parents were never together from my earliest memories and my dad was um it had me like every other weekend type of deal um, but I was uh, in year round sports from a young age with football and track. And so my dad had us much more than every other weekend. Um, but one thing that he instilled in us was the gift of faith. So at home, there was no, there was no prayer life with my mother, God bless her and God bless her soul. Um, but there, the prayers came from my father. So just those, those, the routine of those nightly prayers, like now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord, my soul to keep guard me, Jesus through the night and wake us with the morning light. Like that little prayer, and then we go on to a whole litany of of petitions, intercession, intercessory prayers. That is a prayer that literally, when my dad wasn't there in the home, I never missed saying my nightly prayers. And it sounds silly, but it's little routines, those those habits of prayer that you have to get into. That my dad instilled in me. That even when he was not in my home during the week, or he didn't have me on one of the off weekends. I never went to bed without saying my prayers and becoming grateful. And even like, even if I missed a prayer, like I was like OCD about it. Oh, I, I missed my prayers. So it was, the point is, is that that foundational relationship with Jesus Christ 
and with God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit was set from the foundation of my father's prayers, who himself, if you were to ask him, he would admit he's the biggest failure too out of the whole bunch. But I, I make sure he knows constantly how much I appreciate it. We're best friends. But it was, it's something as, as uh, not so silly as just your nightly prayers with your kids that make all the difference. It's, though, it's, it's like you can't go to benching 315 pounds on the bench. You got to start small. You know, that rosary feels pretty heavy at first, but if you get into the habit of praying a decade a day, a, ro a, a Hail Mary here and there, eventually you're praying, you know, it takes like 17 minutes tops, I don't know, to pray the rosary if you're, if you're, if you're focused. And then, uh, but the next thing you know, it's like not only rosary, you're chopping by mercy, your daily mass guy, your Eucharist out of a door, you know, but you gotta, you gotta have those baby steps. And so that's something that my father did that left a profound, lasting, invaluable, eternal impact on my soul. Man, we, we, we got to give a shout out to, uh, it, it, it's, it's Chris, right? Yeah. Chris, my dad. Yeah. yeah. Man, He'll uh, be listening. <laughs> and, and, uh, I think the, the biggest thing that we can take away from those, from, from what you just shared, Connor, is the fact that sometimes it is the small things, but that's how the mustard seed works. And, um, a, a lot of times you, you know, you forget, like you, I guess human nature is we just want to feel the change right away. You know, it's, it's, it's always on our time. It's never on God's time, but you, you just never know when it's going to manifest itself. Right. You know, and, and, uh, so that's like, that's why I, I can, I can see the passion in you because that's probably how you uh, approach what you do as a theology instructor, because what they're going to hear from you is going to be probably very different from what they might see in college in life and and those are around them even in the workforce into uh, adulthood but like now it's you know dad thanks for staying on top of me because usually yeah. it's the opposite you know a lot of cradle catholics will say oh you know that was just something mom did and i wanted i wanted the opposite for my family and it, it sounds like you you want the same thing because you are a recipient of that grace yeah a hundred a hundred percent um I try to do that with my kids too. So, you know, Sunday mass is, is a given it's, you know, we're blessed to be able to have the opportunity to go to mass now. I mean, if it was a, if it was a chore before COVID and now, like now it has our perspective changed, you know, hopefully everyone sees it as such a blessing that we don't have to go, we get to go and we're so blessed for it. But yeah, the nightly prayers we're with the last year. Now we've incorporated the nightly rosary with my family as well. And so it just little by little, just, just uh, more weight on the bar, getting stronger spiritually as a family. And we want to go zero to hundred, but that's just, that's just not reality. And that's just something that we get from scripture. Uh, Jesus Christ himself spent what, 30 years in solitude with his mother being a carpenter in Nazareth before he went three years into ministry, just to spend three hours on the cross for our salvation. You know I mean? It's like, it takes time. It takes time. Yeah. So in, in, uh, just so um, the audience is aware, so you're a father of two, two baby now, girls. Yeah. Now that you've, I mean, now that you've really see, seen the importance of the father figure in the home, you know, based on what your your father did for you, mm -hmm. um, maybe maybe uh, how you you approach parenthood is, is is very different. But I I would have to think it's very intentional. It is a hundred percent. Um, I approach it with fear and trembling. <laughs> you know, it's the the. <laughs> I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to fail. You know, I got, well, I got one mission and that's to, to not only get myself to heaven and God willing my students, but first and primary, my domestic church at home, which is my wife and my two baby girls, um, Madeline, who's seven and Adrian, who's 10 months. Hmm. And so it's very intentional and it's, and without the, going back to what my father taught me, it's about setting up those routines. And so before um, I got married, I actually was studying for the Catholic priesthood. And so that's where I got my philosophy degree. And I was blessed uh, to be studying for the Diocese of Orange, but for undergrad, they sent all the undergrad seminarians up to Mount Angel, um, Oregon, where we studied with the Benedictine monks. And so whether you like it or not, the routine of prayer becomes habitual because the bells are going to be ringing, and that's a reminder to get to prayer. And so I harp not only on my family in a good way, God willing, but also my students. We have to be good about setting up these holy reminders to call us to prayer. So um, prayer before meals, oh, I must sound like a broken record with my family. I mean, sometimes I become so, it, it's like almost every bite, the prayers are just going through my head. But so we have every time meal, of course, we're praying. Well, actually, 
um, I often wake up my, my, my kids by blessing them. That's how I wake them up. And then uh, before the meals, uh, whenever we get in the car, I rattle off a whole litany of saints to protect us because it's a scary place out there. And then, of course, um, uh, bedtime prayers and our nightly rosary. So, And there'll be more throughout the day. But I find that if you have these set routines, intentional prayer times that we gather for prayer, it actually frees you up to be more spontaneous in, uh, in your spontaneous ejaculation prayers. So it, ju it just happens that way. And I, and I tend to feel very protected and um, of, of sound, especially going into, uh, into a day, wrapping up a day, feeling grateful, the, despite the, the chaos that we, we probably deal with professionally, you know, in a home, for example, with, with young children. Um, but for example, being appreciative of the meal that's there Yep. Um, and, and, uh, you know, that's kind of when we, we start talking about, you know, um, seeing the, the fruits of your labor from, um, Imm Immaculata ministries. What, what, I mean, what, on your side, what, what do you, um, how can you attribute, tell, you know, walk us through the story of how uh, your devotion to Mary came about and how it eventually led yeah. you to, to do what you, to do what you're doing with, you know, building churches and, and preaching yeah. the gospel all the way in Kenya. Well, first off, um, I don't want any, I'm a sinner. I just like, I'm a sinner. I am Same. constantly, I'm just constantly just a daily conversion, a, a hourly conversion type of guy. I got to constantly just turn back to God and, and ask him for forgiveness. I don't want any of this to sound, um, anything that it's not, it's all the glory to God via the blessed Virgin Mary. So it's, let's just set the, the foundation there. It's all God. It's all for him. Um, so my devotion to Our Lady, I can honestly say that when I die, I only want to be known as a servant of Mary because I know in that way I will give the greatest glory to God. That's just, I'm just resigned to that. I'm convinced of that. I'm married and consecrated. That's what this little chain signifies. As Saint Louis Amen. de Montfort, he suggests to, um, you know, once you're married and consecrated, to show your slavery to Jesus and Mary. You get a little chain to remind yourself. It's a little reminder of your humility and your your role in life now. And so, um, but my devotion, of course, came through my father. Um, you kind of touched on my, my journey here as a Servite. I actually, I'm kind of more of like an honorary alum because I got kicked out of as a Servite, which is pretty wild. Because mm. now I'm back full circle here teaching in front, of the, in front of the kids to the seniors in a year that I missed. So I finally, I finally got in my full year here at Servite, my full, uh, my full four years. I've actually been here now my second year teaching. But my dad... When I got kicked out of here, I kind of fell off the rails pretty hard there and got uh, fell into drugs and stuff because of depression. Mm. Of course, the foundation of my home wasn't there, so there was no support. Um, and the story is quite longer than that. But what my dad did to get me back on track was he turned to Our Lady of Fatima, which will be celebrating her uh, her uh, her um, feast day on the 13th here, so next Thursday. My dad uh, turned to Our Lady in Fatima in 2002 during the year of the rosary proclaimed by St. Pope John Paul II during the year that he instituted the luminous mysteries. And so, mm. which of course is, I can always tie everything back to the Eucharist. So that last mystery of the luminous mysteries is the uh, institution of the Holy Eucharist. Yes. You know it. And another little tidbit too, Our Lady of Fatima, she kind of, high, the, the prior feast day of May 13th was Our Lady of the Holy Eucharist. Mm. And so, so that's May 13th's original feast day, but now Our Lady of Fatima has kind of taken over that. So it's kind of a, a double feast day. So uh, May 13th, just so you guys know, is not only Our Lady of Fatima, but Our Lady of the Holy Eucharist. A beautiful. Oh, wow. Praise if you God. needed, an, if you needed another reason to celebrate, there's another one. <laughs> so my dad turned to Our Lady of Fatima. And so at this point I wasn't speaking to him and he uh, did the five first Saturday uh, devotion. So um, he did that on five first Saturdays. He went to confession pray the rosary, meditate with Our Lady, and of course went to receive um, our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. And he did that for five consecutive months. And then like clockwork, um, he received a miracle. I called him up and said, basically come save my life. Just a few days after he finished his uh, first cycle of his five month novena, because he's now done it two times a year since 2002. He's done it over like 30 times. He's a mm. My family calls him the Novena Man. He's like, he's, he's he, he just he just he's just nonstop. He just saw so much fruit bearing from it that he just never stopped it, and it's something that I continue with to the, to this day. So that was back in 2002, and then lo and behold, uh, within 90 days of me getting sober, we're living in a different state now. I was now enrolled in Reno uh, High School in Reno, Nevada. 
and I helped lead that team to a state championship in football and we won. Yeah, so go Huskies and we won a state championship in in the football season of 2003 and it was there that like my life was forever changed. Like this indelible mark outside of Baptist, I just knew that like God had like done something so powerful in my life that it was it was practically impossible to live um uh a the old way I was living. There was this radical change of life. And it, it wasn't, it wasn't a, it was a St. Paul moment, but it wasn't a knock you off your horse. Like I had like setbacks and minor relapses, but it was never the same. It was, it was, uh, my life was forever changed. And it was just a few years later. So I was 18, I was 23 when I entered seminary. Um, but so that's what fostered. So, so that was in 2002, you'd have to fought. So by 2007, I was going to daily mass when I turned 21. So 18 by 21 as a daily mass guy. It's been over 14 years. And being a, being a father, there are some days where you can't get to mass. And I'm not so OCD about it anymore. Like charity sometimes, if you're going to be living out a, a, a Christ-centered life, then sometimes charity calls you to work, right? You know, literally, to, you got you to put tire to the, to, um, tire to the road. So there are some days where I can't make it to mass, but daily mass for the most part, 14 years now, it's part of my life. Um, so that was in 2007, 2010. And, um, and the rosary is just the whole time too. So I don't know, you can't even mention the story. It's rosary since 2002. It's, it's mass, uh, like a big dog since 2007, chapel of divine mercy and confession. You know, it's, it's mass rosary confession. If I was going to sum it up, you know, and we could go on to some other stories, but we're gonna we're gonna keep it going about the divine mercy. That's a whole nother story in yes, itself. It is. It's a whole yes, nother it podcast. Whole nother podcast. My life changed forever in Divine Mercy Sunday in the year two thousand and seven at Saint Joseph's Catholic Church in Placentia. My life was forever changed. Wow. Something happened there that that changed, and that was that was the Saint Paul moment. Just so That's you it. guys know, uh, you know, you, those of you that are listening or are watching on YouTube. Look out for that episode because I, yeah, <laughs> it, it is a cliffhanger because I am here near in Placentia. I am a, a Richard Joseph, you know, consecrated to Joseph. And, you know, when you can really see how the Divine Mercy worked, especially in, you know, even this, this past uh, Divine Mercy Sunday, there's God, God's at work. There's, there's, there's no doubt about it. And, and, you know, you saw that also. Please go on. He certainly is. God and His Divine Mercy is just, uh, it knows no bounds. And, and I have been a direct recipient of his mercy. And so I proclaim it as much as I possibly can. And um, so we have to fast forward a little bit. So now I enter seminary and the first things, so in 2010, I enter seminary uh, to uh, finish my bachelor's degree. And the first thing that a lot of guys do is they get married and consecrated. And um, so on March 25th, the feast day of the Annunciation in 2010, I consecrated myself to Jesus through Mary. Um, and then that's what I did. So nothing changes. It's still daily mass. It's daily rosary type of guy. It's confession as needed as much as possible. And that's what I did. That's, that's how you get the holiness, right? That's, that's what a father C preaches all the time over St. Martin de Porres and your Belinda. And, and that's the recipe for success from like the, the same, these juggernauts of the faith that are lining my walls, really. Um, that's what it is. It's the people who leave the best mark and who are really, you see the greatest the witness to Christ are people who are dedicated to the Eucharist daily, if you can, daily rosary and the confessional. It's it's the it's the undefeatable uh, three hit combo. It seems to be what the secret what's in the secret sauce, and so that's something that I've been doing now since uh, you know 2007 more or less. But anyway, so I'm married and consecrated. Um, two years later, I graduate from seminary, but during my senior year and my undergrad, my mom passed away and my grandma passed away, and that's kind of how my the Lord had. It guided me to leave, um, and I didn't know where God was leading me, but there were some family issues that I had to take care of, and and so I had to spend time away, and God just continued to work with me. Um, so I'm out of seminary now. It's it's now 2015, um, and I'm just trying to find my, my way in life, and I remember going outside one day, and um, – and I, and I have my first daughter already and just kind of like leaving seminary and just getting into fatherhood. And, and, the, and, and I just, I don't know, it's a hard feeling. I think guys who leave seminary may have this, would understand better. So if there's any seminarians or ex-seminarians out there, they may understand. But you feel like you're letting God down and there's no other way to say it. And, mm. 
and and it takes some time just adjusting saying like well what, now what's my new mission in life like i know like i have a child i'm a husband i gotta i gotta find it but you just feel like it, the guy like this priest they can leave a profound impact in life like on the world and like now i'm just kind of like settling for less and that's not and i'm a father i'm a husband but that's just kind of the, the feeling that i had and maybe that's not universal that's just that's just where i was at and so in 2015 i was living in brea going to a daily mass at saint Andrew marici's in brea over there mm -hmm. and a woman came up to me after praying the rosary and um and, and her name is cc she she gets around to all the the parishes in our area and she's this amazing woman and she says hey there's this um there's this anonymous nun in pennsylvania that is supposedly receiving these messages from heaven <laughs> maybe you'd like to read them i don't know and i don't really think it's right now the time a place to promote exactly the name of these messages because of i don't know, I'll just i'm just going to talk about the fruits of them you know maybe I don't want to get into promoting him and people digging into him, but if any of your listeners would like to, uh, maybe we could share my email with them afterwards. And I would be glad to go one-on-one -on -one and share a little bit deeper about those messages and what it did for me. But mm. so, but private revelations, Catholic, uh, private revelations is kind of my thing going back to our lady Fatima, right? Okay. You have my attention, you know, our lady. And so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll read those. And so I read these private revelations and they, I was like, these are amazing. And I was like, I was on the impression through prayer and discernment. I was like, these aren't even like for the world. Like these are for me. Mm. I was like, our lady is speaking directly to me. Yes. And so I started doing some radical things. And so when my mom died, I inherited some uh, commercial real estate. And so we had a little bit of money. Um, but I started to be, because of these messages, I began to receive this like radical call of detachment. And uh, I started to like, I couldn't give away money fast enough. I don't know how else to put that, but like, I, I, I couldn't get rid of it. I just saw it as a stumbling block to um, progressing spiritually and um, just more weight on the bar universally in my life, fasting and praying and leading my family in prayer and leading friends to prayer. And it was, it was just a very interesting part of my life in that when I was reading those, and then our, and, and our lady, I'm convinced she's speaking to me in a lot of ways. And I remember going outside one night in 2015. And at this point, these messages literally told me to like go back to Servite and start coaching and just getting involved. Because at one point in the messages, they said, and the people following these messages will call themselves servants of Mary. I'm like, ha, I'm going back to Servite Catholic High School because <laughs> the, the Servites, they're known as the servants of Mary. I'm so I'm like, okay. Uh, but at this point, our lady's just speaking really clearly to me. So I go back to coaching at Servite. I was coaching football back to um, my old stomping ground, the scene of the crime. <laughs> and and I, I go outside one night in 2015, and I just re remember like looking at the, the heavens and the stars, which is one of my most favorite places to pray outside of the presence of our Lord in the Eucharist. And I was like, just give me a mission, like something that I don't even know about. Like I want to do something great for you, Lord, just – you just let me know what you want me to do and um it's all yours like i'm just i'm just gonna do it for you and i was kind of like in a silly position i was kind of screaming at the heavens i was like oh i'm your son mom give me a job like dude i want to do something great and i'd be more than that i said i want to see you <laughs> i was like i'm your son you're my mother i want to see you i meant face to face that's what i you know you ask big and you, you may receive big. I didn't know what I was doing. So I, when I walk back into my house, I have a statue of Our Lady of Grace on my porch. And I, and I just kind of stroked the statue. And I remember laughing. And I'm sorry, Mom. I didn't mean to, like, put you on blast like that. And, you know, but but here I am. And I got to kind of preface this. So what was going on at that time was I was becoming so rad radically detached from things like money that I actually put myself, my family, in some dire straits i had given away like, all of our savings i didn't know we would need savings because i had we had perpetual income coming in but um but i i liquidated our savings in a spirit of charity and and that's that's what it put me in that's the situation i put my family in and lo and behold that the the homeowner who we were renting our house from uh she wanted to sell her home and i didn't have the funds to put my family in a new position and now I am, wasn't, you know, in a, I wasn't looking very good at this point, you know, following these 
supposed uh, apparitions. And then here you go. If you're looking for negative fruit from an apparition, like, like, well, well that's not looking very good for, for myself. And so I'm going to Servite High School to, to uh, coach the next day. I stop at St. Mary's in Fullerton, and I go before our, a statue of Our Lady. And I said, Mom, I said, look at me. Here I am. Just I'm doing everything you're asking of me. I'm giving everything I have, my strength, my energy, my time, talent, and treasure to you. And now here I am stuck in this, this, this pickle here. I need, I need you to get me out of it. And one of the, one of the families I helped, um, they were underwater on their mortgage. They had planned to fix up their house and sell it. And so what I had done was I said, how about I give you, I loaned you a sum of money. It was actually, it was $30,000. I'm going to give you $30,000. No, no interest, no usury, nothing like that. You just fix up your home. And when you sell the home, you just give me back the money. Um, and that was a year earlier. <laughs> and, so, and so it was, um, it was, uh, we, it, things weren't going as planned, right? As many things do in the construction of a home and the way escrow works and falling out of escrow and the relationship was getting kind of strained. And so when I made that prayer to our lady, I was like, mom, you know that there's actually this one financial iron in the fire that you can, you can, um, uh, just, just come to fruition and help that family sell their home. And then, Hey, we'll be in a, we'll be in a better position. And then, so that next day and what's so the part of the prayer was i says and what i'm going to do for you mom is i'm going to go back to square one you give me back that money you just tell me what you want me to do with it and it's all yours it's all yours again i, I just needed to like get my family in a position and again use the money however you want mama that night <laughs> that night a woman from kenya africa reaches out to me on instagram and I started this Instagram account to promote those heavenly messages, by the way. Hmm. Um, and so I'm not going to get on to it now. So a woman from Africa starts binging me and direct messaging me like, hey, tell me about these messages. And and I'm kind of already forgetting about like the prayer I made earlier, not thinking that like this is where it's going to lead. And um, and then but she was just saying things in the in, in our direct messaging that like no one can really know except for God who is in my prayer life. And so uh, God was like leading me. I was like, this is a very interesting conversation. But it, right away, she basically said, I need your help to build a chapel over here in Kenya, Africa. Dedicated all a perpetual help. I'm like, my first instinct was, you're crazy. Okay. <laughs> and like, I don't have the funds. I know that. Um, I'm not, I don't know anything about sending money to Africa. I'm in America. I don't know you from, from Adam. Mm -hmm. And so... I'd love, I'd love to help you, but I can't. The best I can do is maybe talk to a priest over here to help you out. But the conversation didn't end. And then the Holy Spirit's like reminding me in our through Our Lady, like, don't forget what I, you just said. You just said, you just got to tell me what, what I'm going to, you know, you just give me a mission. You said you're going to like, you know, divert the funds. And so I'm like, okay. So the money did not come right away. So Two weeks later, I find my family and myself now sleeping on my in-law's couch. So I'm not looking like a very good husband at this point, not a very good provider. But I told Beatrice in Kenya, Africa, I said, I'm in trouble. You know, I, I, but I, I said, I tell you what, you, you say a prayer to Our Lady, and if, and if these funds come back, they're yours. They're yours. Lo and behold, two weeks after uh, we first had contact, those people were already in escrow. They sold their home. And they had one afternoon surprise me. They said, hey, I want to meet you for coffee. I'm like, oh, this will be good. And they brought back $30,000 practically in ones. They could have done a wire transfer, but they knew I wasn't expecting that money. They knew I knew it was going to be a miracle. They, I have pictures of me standing with wads of cash standing in my living room. And I, and I sent it to, a picture to Beatrice with just stacks of cash. Oh, my God. And I said, Beatrice, you have my attention. Our lady wants a chapel bill. You you just tell me what to do. And she says, I don't know. You figure it out. And lo and behold, 60 days later, um, we had built a chapel. And uh, the uh, archbishop of uh, – back then he was just bishop. Uh, archbishop Philip Agnolo, who's now the president of Kenya's Conference of Catholic Bishops. Wow. He, he was there blessing that first chapel. And um, it was dedicated to all perpetual help. And so that's – that's the quick Reader's Digest. And so lo and behold, that was in 2016 in April. 
um, we, um, we're now in 2021, we've now built five chapels. Dead at first one was Ali Perpetual Help. Second one was Fatima. Third one was Immaculate Conception. Fourth one again was Fatima. And just the other day, on May 1st, the feast day of St. Joseph, we completed our fifth mar- uh, chapel dedicated to the Holy Family, this one. In the year of St. Joseph, yes. at St. Joseph's Parish, the Holy Family Chapel dedicated on his feast day of the worker. Like, you can't, you can't make that stuff up. No. And, no. Um, and it's really been spiraling out of control, really. So it started on just like, okay, lady, you, our lady, you want me to um, build a one chapel is now five. We started doing these mass baptisms. So every chapel we go to, uh, to break ground, we do a mass baptism. So we work with the priest to, um, we say, go out there and tell all the kids who aren't baptized, let's just have a mass baptism and we'll supply, we'll make, uh, we'll send funds for a great big feast. We'll baptize all the kids who come and we'll break ground and we'll start fundraising for a new chapel. And so in the last, uh, since August 15th, of course, the Feast of the Assumption, we try to focus on big Marian feast days. Uh, since 2016, we've now baptized 546 kids. Uh, and one time in August uh, 15th, 2019, I think it was, we baptized 242 kids at three parishes in one day. Mm. So we go back to continually celebrate with these parishes. Beatrice is just, I mean, she's a, a juggernaut for the faith, and she has her own miraculous story where she was cured through the intercession of Our Lady. Uh, through like this incurable skin disease, but, oh, but, but yeah. So now we have five Marian chapels. We baptize as many kids as we possibly can. We focus on big feast days. We let the the surrounding areas know if your kid's not baptized, we're gonna throw a big feast. We're gonna baptize everyone. We're gonna break ground and build a chapel. Um, and uh, now we also actually have ten kids in your in your on Catholic boarding school as well. Uh, so we go out into the surrounding area and we find people who need. Um, the most help and um, these kids who are either the parents have died from maybe AIDS or, or something. And we find these kids and we support their ongoing Catholic education. And we put them at uh, in the school at Our Lady of Aurora school in Kenya, Africa, where they get three square meals a day, Catholic education. It's a boarding school. So they get to live there. And oftentimes they'll go home and stay with Beatrice uh, on Easter break and Christmas break. And then they'll go right back to school. And we've been doing that for the last, uh, Gosh, since five years as well. So we have 10 kids now that we support in, in Catholic year-round boarding school. You know, and, and the, the amazing part of that, Connor, is that, you know, um, you, it seems like you, you've just been so fervent in your prayer that, yes, you, you thought you, you were hearing the prayers right, but it's like when you, when you start connecting the dots, of, cor- of course, in retrospect, right, it, it's so much clearer in retrospect. But at the same time, that's, that's the beauty of how, staying fervent in prayer and constantly asking our mother Mary to intercede and show us, you know, and, and I, you know, I, I guess even more special because, you know, losing your mom, you, you still, ha- people don't realize the beauty of having a spiritual mom that's, yeah. that's there to nurture you and, and, and take your intentions to the Lord. And that, that's, that's something that, you know, people really don't really get to understand if they're outside the faith, but, but being able to, preach the gospel through the through the, the the chapels that you're building and just imagine I, I can imagine the how it, it, it totally transforms those villages and the lives that are affected just by your your work and how God's working through you and um, and, and Beatrice and and everyone that's a, a part of those projects and if you guys are on you know if you ever want to look this up um, and, and keep up with the projects, there's just there's a, a beauty behind being able to see what it, uh, the chapel starts with, um, and you can see all this on Instagram where it's um, it's I- Immaculata underscore Ministries, right? And um, seeing how it's it starts with one brick by brick, um, slowly but surely, and then seeing um, you know s- seeing it being completed and and all the the works that. God is performing in that chapel and and s- starting to, you know, um, transform the lives of of people that really don't have a lot. You know, our yeah, I, I've said it, you know, previously that our, our our first world problems are nothing in comparison to the the destitute um, 
environments and life that so many people live we, you know we, we we here in the u.s just don't 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 get it um because we get so spoiled with all, all the abundance of resources we have here but I, I think it really becomes very real when you know you you can talk to um how fortunate we are here to go go back to um to uh, projects like this and like say if you if you want to do something impactful with your life here's one thing yeah. and that's that's exactly what we're told is to to preach the preach the gospel spread the good news you know and, and that's uh i mean th that's that's um, such an amazing thing to see um and the smiles and all the, mm. uh, the great things that happen with baptisms and um mm. and listening to the videos um it, Th th there's something that just impacts you to, to to carry on fight fight the good fight and and uh and, and see like how, how beauty beautiful that is yeah it's uh it's it's i'm speechless honestly i'm still speechless about it one by god's great <laughs> the power of god to move hearts from around the world like this last chapel we just built we broke ground on the uh, feast day of Christ the King. I think it was October 22nd, like eight months later, almost we finally finished. But that's just how long it like talk about like the, the slow foundation and like being patient with the time, God's timing. And like, we don't always have funds and we just continually just ask and trust in God's provisions. And he's never been outdone in generosity. And as long as you just stay true and like, you just like a, a good investor is like, is in it for the long haul, that marathon, you know, running that good race that St. Paul uh, talks about. Um, just just stay fervent and stay persistent in prayer and in your dedication to serving him. And just step back and watch the miracle happen. I am just still speechless about what's going on over there. And I just kind of get to sit back. And now we have literally, we call it the Immaculata family. And um, it's, it's just really just amazing. So Immaculata underscore ministries on Instagram it was a social media miracle to begin with. And that's where we're mainly, um, that's where we're at. That's where we're present the most. You can kind of find us on Facebook. Well, we're, um, we're only present on, on Instagram. And I don't plan to change anything. I mean, we did have a, a, um, a webpage, um, but that like mysteriously got taken down and hacked. I'm, I'm convinced it was like a demonic attack uh, during COVID. I was like, what did the, it? my, the Immaculata family alerted to me because that's where we had a donation page too. I was like, w whatever, let's just stick to uh, the the Instagram. And that's where we have the GoFundMe page. You can also like write checks and stuff to Immaculate Ministries for a tax deductible donation and and uh, and all that stuff. But we just try to keep it real simple and we're not trying to do anything extravagant. About once a year, we break ground for a new chapel and, and baptize some babies. And we just try to be obedient to God's will and what he's asking of us. And it's it's just the fruit is just beautiful. Yeah, I, and uh, you know, just just being kind of a, a um, uh, being on the outside, kind of just seeing seeing it progress, and then I, and I, I I totally recall when I I saw that it, that the the latest chapel was going to be called the Holy Family Chapel, I was just like I was floored. I mean, I I basically you know grabbed my wife and I was like, look at this, you know, yeah. and, and I was saying. <laughs> That, that everything that we we believe in, even our, our holy family statue that goes around our neighborhood, to continue to, to remind families, stay in prayer, pray the rosary, look at the holy family as your model, your, you know, between Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And then when that came up, I was like, I, I literally had to s step back and I was like, oh man, this is just, you know, so like, I, I think what, what you know and i'll give you a chance to kind of share your message with the dads out there connor but for me I, I almost feel like you know we have to realize that we can't expect things to happen on our own and on our time this is this is still god's work no matter what and i i think my my encouragement to the dads is to to see where where do i need to work on myself and am i best serving god and and you know if I don't have, you know, a, a direct devotion to Mary, maybe, maybe I should. And um, if, if I haven't utilized a rosary and, and used that as a weapon to protect my family, then maybe I should. Because you, you see it, I'm sure you see it all the time, especially teaching theology. There's a direct attack on God and families and fathers specifically. 
So I, I, I can't help but feel like surrounding yourself with the right people and uh, the, the blue mantle of protection from our, our, our lady mm-hmm. that, that we're, we're going to be in good hands. Yeah. Hey man, we are in good hands. So if I can leave like um some type of encouraging words to dads out there and fathers, I mean, the, the word that I'm just being inspired with right now is just persistence. We have to be persistent. And um, what I have found is that um, when we enter into prayer, well, like you mentioned immediate results, but that's just not how the kingdom works. That's not how spirituality works. And I'm all about quick and fast results. I love it. Like that's the only reason I have a hard time diving into fiction because I, I, I just I just give it to me straight. So I go straight to the scripture, the wisdom of the saints, some encyclicals. And like that's about like all I can digest because I just don't have time to read in between the lines, even though I know there's deeper meaning there. But I, I have a hard time. So I'm, I understand that we want to fix our families, but there's just no shortcut. And so we have to be committed to that daily communion with God. And if you can't get to daily mass, you can pick up a rosary, but daily mass, I mean, that's the gold standard. That's the bar. Try to do that, but be committed to prayer. And this is what I found what God does is he doesn't fill you to the brim. Like I want to levitate. You know I mean? He doesn't do that. Like he may, he may speak to you out loud, but what he, the natural consequence the natural result of prayer is communion he's going to be communing with you and he doesn't speak to you the same way that i'm speaking to you right now you may not hear him audibly although that can happen okay i'm not going to rule that out but what he does is he speaks to us in even a more powerful way in a more a heart-to-heart communion or adoration a mouth-to-mouth right and so he's going to fill you up for the day to give us the hope necessary, the faith to get through that day, just to get to the next day, give us God our daily bread. Mm. So if we are faithful to that daily time of prayer daily, like if we don't have it first in ourselves, we're not gonna have anything to give to our families. Mm. So before we can start leading our families, we better be turning and converting ourselves to God. So if it's just 30 seconds, give God that window, that opportunity. And this is what I found, the great, The great secret of Marian consecration that I found is that every day God's going to give us a gift. And if we respond to that grace, that gift that he gives us every day. So even if your prayer is, Lord, this day is yours. Please help me to respond to the grace. Give me that gift that you want me, that you want me to receive. If you respond and open that great gift, then that will give you enough joy, enough hope, enough faith to get you to the next day. And There's so much work that needs to be done to respond to that grace. Like we have to respond to the grace. He's giving so much grace, but we have to respond. The next day, same thing, 30 seconds, one minute of prayer a day. And then the next day, respond again. And then the next thing you know, you're going to be like a Arnold Schwarzenegger juggernaut for the faith. Like it's like you can't just slap 315 pounds on the the weight bench. You're going to have to incrementally go day by day. But if you respond daily to those daily gifts, eventually, eventually Christ will pull out this big gift. And in this gift, which is already bought and paid for from Mm. his sacrifice on the cross, this gift is hidden already in Our Lady's heart. And if you go to Our Lady's heart, these gifts are laying in wait for you to open your daily gifts, I call them. They're your daily gifts. Go to Our Lady, to her immaculate heart and say, Our Lady, Mama, can you please just give me the gift for today and help me to open this gift? Because in that gift, God's divine will for your life. And so every day, open that divine will gift, that that gift of living in the divine will, that gift of living in divine will. And eventually, God will give you that ultimate and greatest gift. And I think everyone's different. And it's not going to be the end of your life. I What I do believe, maybe it's this podcast for Rich. Maybe it's Immaculate Ministries for me. I don't know. But it's that gift where not only our sanctity, like our final, like our lasting indelible mark for for the church will be in it that will not only save our souls, but potentially millions of other souls will be in this great gift. But we won't be ready to accept it unless we're continually responding to that daily inspiration, saying yes to these daily gifts. And God forbid we end up like that poor rich man. And I see and I get this. This theology, that this, this spirituality from, from Scripture, we see that in Scripture with that rich, that rich young man who comes to Jesus Christ. 
And he says, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? What did Moses tell you to do? Well, follow the Ten Commandments. I've done all these things. So basically, I've responded to the will of God. I know all these things. I've done them all. Good man, good man. And then what does Jesus Christ do? He pulls out that one and last final gift. He says, now go and sell everything and come follow me. And what does he do? The scripture says, and he went away sad. And that was the last time we ever hear of him. Imagine what would have happened if he would just open that last and final gift. His life would have continued and we would have been reading a different story. And I guarantee you, most likely his name would have had apostle in front of it. Mm -hmm. But we never hear of it. It, That's it. He never responded. So I'm just encouraging you guys to stay true to that daily prayer through Our Lady and go receive those daily gifts of living in the divine will and get ready. Because one day God's going to present something to you and it's not going to come pretty and package is a nice bow. It's going to come in the form of a heavy cross with thorns and he's going to hand you a spear. He's going to say, now go stab yourself in the side. And it's just, that's just the nature of being a Christian. And Rich knows he looks nice right now, but all the editing and the preparation and, and getting people to come on the show, like it's so difficult. It's like it, the veneer is pretty right now, but you know, as well as anyone, the work that goes into getting to heaven is just so difficult. So I just encourage you guys to stay true to prayer, stay true to that daily communion with God and just, and just, just stay true to him. And just the next thing you know, your life will be radically changed and your, and your family will be following your lead. Amen, brother. Yeah. And, uh, the, the, you know, it just so well said, because like I said, we, we tend to be very impatient with we want now, now, now. And it's never it's never let me just let me just do what I know is right and do it a little bit better each day because it, it gets us yeah. to where, where we need to be in his time, not ours. But. Man, uh, there's gonna be a lot of dads gonna love this. I hope, I hope you know the audience didn't get too uh, too burnt because there was a lot of fire here over the last uh, 55 <laughs> minutes, man. And um, Connor, that man, thank God for your work, and uh, I'll yeah. continue to pray for you and 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 everyone that that you you know uh, surrounds you and and uh, and all your work is just just a beauty to see. And um, to the to the uh, you know the viewers and the, the audience. You know, this is just part of the the Marian series, and you're gonna see that in our in our show notes, there's gonna be, you know, ways to to be more involved with Immaculata Ministries, and if you really want to, you know, if you feel uh, called to to help out um, and contribute to these projects each year, this is a great time for you to do it and see what what can really happen when you you lean on um, Mother Mary's intercession. And you, you, you truly start to do God's work with yeah. people, the people of God. So, you know, uh, outside of that, guys, it's been a beautiful episode. This podcast has ended. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Be, be to God. God. That's right. <laughs>